What's going on everybody? It's your boy Jobbers and Goons and today I am doing a video on a character that caught a lot of backlash recently on my channel. I did Sukuna vs Madara and people were really upset about my conclusions on the video and I will admittedly say I didn't go super in depth for either character on that video as it was a part of the Never Close or Not Even Close series. However, a fan, shout out to Kaiju, a uh, subscriber of course, hit me up, sponsored a in-depth on both Sukuna, Madara, and then a reanalysis in-depth, and I'm happy to do so. So today, the first video we'll, we will be doing is on Sukuna himself. Now, another thing, I guess people don't know the meme on my channel, which is fair if you don't watch my content all the time. A me mispronouncing stuff on purpose. Usually I make the joke, it's America, I'll do what I want. I'll say what I want. That's the new name now, shit like that. It's just been a meme I've done for years on my channel. But I guess some people don't know that, which is fine. I guess you just don't watch my content. It's cool. But regardless, I hope you guys enjoy. And if you like these in-depth videos, get this above 300 plus likes, and then we will go from there. And I'll bring more characters back. Of course, Madara will be the next in-depth. Also, I will be doing two things. I'll be doing the regular scaling on this video for Sukuna. And then at the end of the video, or after the regular scaling part, I'm going to do an in-depth breakdown of gojo versus sakuna just to give my take on the analysis of how that battle actually played out because i guess there's some controversy in the community around it regardless i hope you guys enjoy sorry for the long intro but yeah this is my in depth on sakuna i hope you guys are ready and let's begin so first up in this section will be power uh, some side scaling will be applied of course but we will get into just how strong the attack potency is of Sukuna himself. So during his fight with Gojo, who's considered the strongest sorcerer of his time, observers of the fight are of the mentality that Sukuna likely is just above Gojo in power. And of course, some pieces of this fight will be referenced in the scale, but the deep analysis on that fight itself will be provided later. If it weren't for subversion and the weaponizing of trick attacks as well as gambling on the unknown, Gojo would likely be in trouble in terms of just raw power between him and Sukuna. At this point in that fight, Sukuna isn't even using his entire bag of tricks. He is only using part of it to test out both Gojo's powers and defenses. Sukuna's natural power and abilities are implied to be beyond even Gojo's. Sukuna is directly compared to a god. On top of this, Sukuna's natural energy and energy use is even more insane than Gojo's. Gojo being a six-eyed user allows him to be competitive in that department and keep it uh, somewhat relative in terms of power. In one of the early uh, novels that you could, of course, purchase and make sure to go support JJK as well. We love supporting the uh, authors. There was mention on the back of the book that Sukuna himself could easily destroy the world uh, during his fight with the likes of Gojo. Onlookers even had to concede eventually that Sukuna was holding back. The reason is Sukuna has to face the rest of the world and its heavy hitters immediately after. He also is observing Maharaga so he could understand the adaptation exactly how certain moves work because some things he didn't quite understand regardless of being stronger than the absolute top tiers in the verse are considered immeasurable compared to the rest in terms of power and knowledge beings who are fodder to them are described as being able by themselves to destroy countries with ease entire nations would fall to them sukuna himself is considered transcendent to the rest a natural disaster compared to the rest now being called transcendent to beings who can threaten the world beings who can obviously solo countries destroy countries that's a bit ridiculous their brains and powers of the top tier sorcerers defy all modern science and technology their power can energize everything for a lifetime which is an absurd amount of energy Sukuna was able to one-shot Mahagora, or Maharaga, you know how I get down, 
<laughs> and uh, this is the same Shinigami who can adapt to all concepts and phenomena. This includes mathematical impossibilities like imaginary mass, infinities, and perfect spheres. Now, I want to talk about this part too. Because there is weird arguments against the perfect sphere not mattering or not being an AP feat because they said it's infinite pressure. Well, I'm not trying to be funny, but if you literally look up what pressure means, how it's defined, that is force or power. Literally, literally to apply force, you need some sort of power or strength. So the fact that's argued against as infinite power or infinite pressure that is not infinite that's just a super weird thing as well as it's stated to be a mathematical impossibility it can't happen within our physics beings that vastly scale below sukuna can hold back world destroying events and even our threats to destroy the worlds themselves and power for example black holes are used within the verse that are verbatim stated to be able to one shot the earth Gojo is strong enough to produce things physics and math deem impossible. He also can produce infinities in the literal sense. They exist beyond reality, and he simply brings them forth. They do exist, and he brings them to their existence. This infinity is, again, mathematically impossible. It would be going beyond what is physically possible in our universe, or 3D, 4D, in that sense and an idea like infinite regression in practice is insane because it's the idea that a finite distance can be cut in half infinitely thus infinitely you would never reach it you would theoretically not be able to touch something because you can't get past that infinity and for this practice to be put into a fictional power is just incredibly fun to see to be honest country soloing beings are mere insects in compared to a heavily weakened sukuna keep in mind a lot of the feats that we see a lot of the feats that are high end for jjk so far those are weak compared to sukuna those do not matter a lot of times in comparison to sukuna and that's very important to remember Myths and folk folklore, including the nine-tailed fox, exist in verse, and sorcerers are more than capable of dealing with them, with, of course, Sukuna scaling above all of them. And this is interesting, and I kind of want to hear thoughts. What do you guys think about when fictions just have clear references to mythology and folklore existing? Do you think we should take the scaling for that folklore? Or do you think we should say they don't have that scaling Let's wait to see how the verse defines it. Let me know in the comment section because I'm curious. But I just wanted to add that bit of information because I feel like it can spice up the scaling if you so chose to. In Domains, we have seen beings fodder to Sukuna create space with multiple mountains. So at the very worst, they have the energy and potency to literally produce multiple mountains, no problem. Top tiers are also described as having boundless cursed energy, with obviously Sukuna being named the strongest to ever exist. He is obviously a top tier, like that goes without explaining. Sukuna destroyed the best of his era, and even his splintered body cannot be destroyed by others who of course have prep time to try and destroy it, but they simply can't. This is important as well because in his fight with Gojo, he does imply some of the sorcerers he fought before made the likes of Gojo look average, which is interesting to discuss, and I'm excited to get to that point. Domains and powerful ones at that alter the laws of reality. They ignore them and create their own time space and are described as being between dreams and reality itself, beyond the natural laws, which of course is things like gravity, time, space, how light operates, how mass operates, all that good sense. Gojo escaped somehow, existence erasure, and the prison realm, and caused an earthquake, felt 280 kilometers away. He was able to move in a realm that did not have physical time and we'll talk about that in the speed uh, portion but 
the fact that he could kill a being like that who somehow ignored existence erasure it's pretty crazy that's what a curse was supposed to do a technique was supposed to do yet he just negged it because he's gojo fuck it Sukuna also, in terms of potency and a pretty good hacks he has, he was able to burn a special curse grade that was actually supposed to be the incarnation of fire itself. Regardless, he was able to casually even burn it with his own fire he produced, which is mad disrespectful, by the way. But in terms of power and potency, that's what he brings. He easily scales above characters that produce mathematically improbable negative numbers imaginary mass and infinities themselves which at bare minimum scale to 3d 4d considering how you scale time and space on top of that he scales easily above black hole producing threats earth busters world busters nation busters whole bunch of evidence for beings like that as well as him scaling above all of it which is pretty crazy to consider and is why i have him in such high regard um, in terms of his attack potency and with that out of the way let's get into the speed department now admittedly and i think i've said this before in other videos and streams the biggest contention i see in jjk is perhaps the speed but we're gonna get into why he's way faster than people give him credit for and try to downplay sukuna to so first off lasers are blatantly dodged in canon material by weaker characters than even sukuna himself so obviously it stands to reason he can he can move to that degree as well given they can't just blitz him on top of this he was able to dodge gojo who had amped his attack to be a much faster reasonably and stronger attack it was stated at 200 percent as well as this was launched off guard even though he reacted like i said it's important to note this was an off guard attack he did not expect him to attack with an amped move like this and at the moment he did to the point that he was called the greatest trickster of that time because he literally tried to catch him slipping which i don't blame him at all rip gojo Another speed thing important with Gojo, who clearly Sukuna scaled to in speed, is Gojo moved and escaped an enhanced prison realm that was completely void of physical time itself. This is also directly confirmed in an interview with the author Gege. Now, this is something I want to talk about as well, because people like to use author statements. For example, he said, oh, Kakashi and dojo are not on the same level first of all he has no authority over kakashi and what if he thinks kakashi's high out of reversal and he thinks dojo's just baseline out of reversal you know we don't know his actual thoughts on their scaling but if we accept some of his author statements why don't we accept all of them like when he says indeed he was moving in a realm that was devoid of physical time why don't we take the author's statement where he explains that he felt wrong for putting in mock as it was seen as such a big deal and he realized why? Because in his own statement himself, he said we went from infinite to mock. So characters in series, obviously the high tier ones, according to Gege, have infinite speed. So are we going to nitpick? in particular what he says and how we apply it or are we going to be fair and say yeah he did confirm they're using mathematical improbabilities they're using imaginary mass and negative numbers which applies stuff like tachyons which are inherently ftl but again they are amped and they are controlled uh, and amped by the energy so it's not just regular baseline movement and it's an infinite amount of them for the idea of infinite regression to even take place to control multiple infinities to move them to move these particles that is absolutely insane and what's even wilder sukuna scaled above him and was stronger than him as confirmed by gojo in his dreamlike state when he was dying that he no matter what he could not get sukuna to show his full power and full extent of what he's capable of including speed no matter what he did and that sukuna held back the whole time and could have killed him at any point 
So again, if we ignore author statements for one, but we consider it for another, I don't think that's very fair. I don't think that makes sense. Hashimo as well is stated directly to use electromagnetic waves that obviously he enhances with his power. And not only could he avoid these, Sukuna could downright blitz it. And keep in mind, when he fought Gojo, he was not at full power. Also, Sukuna can instantly react to imaginary mass and the attack of Infinity's win off guard. It's not just something he scales to when fully on guard. Characters, as mentioned in the power section, can also combat and react to black holes, which are superior to light and that light itself cannot escape. Itadori, who can move within a trillionth of a second. Now, before we continue, you might be familiar with that uh, mathematical statement right there because that's also a picosecond or a picosecond, however the fuck you say it. Who cares? It's my channel. This is important because a lot of people use that to gas up how fa I believe there is one statement of picosecond in uh, the likes of Naruto. There's also a statement of that for the Flash. It's a very fast speed, at least relative to light, if not as fast as light. And for that to be put in there for even significantly weaker characters than the likes of Sukuna, uh, that's pretty impressive uh, to have as just like a standard. If you like calculation type stuff instead of the higher metas, that's a good one to put on the table. Overall, he is a lot faster than given credit for. A lot of the downplay people use from author statements are also heavily nagged by author statements for example he also said his characters transcend the script at a certain point and that they are beyond even the author's control which would give them narrative enough manip and fictional transcendence gets real messy there my point is sakuna is easily ftl scale scales above ftl characters characters that even battle black holes which obviously light cannot even escape as verbatim stated he scales above characters that can move negative numbers, imaginary mass, and mac, uh, mathematical improbabilities, uh, things that should not be possible within time and space, but does it anyway. Uh, and he's immeasurably above characters that also can dodge the likes of flight. He's fast enough and even capable of tagging a character that can move in a realm without time itself for higher arguments. And the author even said the high tiers go from infinite. And there's also characters with mock speed, which he agrees was a mistake to do. He should have stuck with the infinite. Regardless, way faster than people give him credit for. And Sukuna is absolutely a beast in that regard. Now, if you've made it this far, we reviewed some of his hacks. We reviewed some of his power. We know he can cut across infinities in existence itself with his uh, enhanced cleave. But we're going to get even further in depth by a complete analysis of his fight versus Gojo, which was one of my most favorite fights in the last few years, as well as when you get into it, it shows a lot more about his character. So let's begin. And also, if you haven't liked the video already, definitely consider doing so, considering how far into the video you are. Now, Gojo approached the Sukuna fight knowing Sukuna did not have the full extent of his power. Sukuna did not have all of his fingers. He had not been fully assembled. On top of this, Gojo was amped by others and enhanced his own techniques. This include purple going by 200% or the clash of infinities. This was a subversive tactic to catch Sukuna slipping. And Gojo is then referred to as the greatest trickster showing he's doing all he can to get the better of Sukuna before this drags out to a possibility of Sukuna winning. Gojo is stated not to be holding back and has been using special training to prepare for this specific battle. He knows he has to kill Sukuna here and even remarks that he will not hold back knowing it's Megumi's body. He is willing to do whatever it takes. Sukuna says being proud of landing sneak attacks is a trash trait to have, which some of you might agree to disagree, or you might rock with how tough he's being in this instant. He also states Gojo is merely another fish to skin, and he will enjoy toying with him. Observers of the fight 
are of the mentality that Sukuna likely is just above Gojo. If it wasn't for subversion and the weaponizing of trick attacks, as well as gambling on the unknown, Gojo would likely be in a lot more trouble if Sukuna was fighting more direct. At this point, Sukuna isn't even using his entire bag of tricks. He's using only part of them to test out Gojo's power and defenses. Sukuna's natural power and ability are implied to be beyond Gojo very early into the fight by onlookers. Sukuna is then compared to a god. On top of this, Sukuna's natural energy and energy use is even more insane than Gojo's. Gojo being a six-eyed user allows him to be competitive in that department. Their domains go on to finally clash, something onlookers had been waiting to see. And while it's initially called even, Sukuna's domain goes further and can hit from the outside and results in Gojo getting slashed. Also keep in mind, Sukuna is real confident in planning and in terms of matching the brilliance of Gojo at every moment in this fight. And the onlookers felt like it was shaping up to be one-sided even early on, with it being acknowledged Sukuna is holding back. Sukuna is then revealed to be overwhelmingly stronger. This results in Gojo using moves he simply has never been seen using before, including a very popular move in the series Simple Domain, which allows him to stop imminent attacks from completely wrecking him. Gojo has to buy time to keep Sukuna off of him as he reverts energy to get his techniques back to power. This allows him to hit Sukuna with a point blank red as he shows a genius way of manipulating his energy, which a lot of characters in verse can't even do. Gojo is now constantly adjusting the properties of his techniques to try and get the drop on Sukuna. Sukuna simply matches the adjustments to continue making this a battle of attrition. He is aware he can outpower and outlast even a Gojo with threat, while Sukuna himself is holding back. As the battle gets more complex, this is due to Gojo revealing he has techniques he has never shown, and the confidence of the onlookers start to wane. Hashimo himself announces he will attack next when Gojo dies. The battle seems to be more so Gojo whipping out all the stops to prevent his own death, which of course, Gojo, one who finds lonely and isolation in his strength, has been craving to have. As the battle continues, it is surmised Sukuna simply is copying some of Gojo's techniques by observing them once. He too can heal domain usage. On top of this, he has Gojo flustered with his strategy, showing his high, high battle IQ and his ability to imitate powers and abilities done in front of him only once by manipulating the reality warping properties of first energy. Gojo was slightly faster with his domain and hit Sukuna with unlimited void. This particular encounter is seen as Gojo's way of winning the fight, or the first real win con forth for him. Sukuna then reveals the use of Maharaga, or should I say Mahagora? Let me know in the streets. Maharaga had already adapted to the likes of Gojo's unlimited void. Gojo did not even realize Sukuna had prepared this. Sukuna reveals he uses Megumi's soul to adapt to Unlimited Void. He let the battle go on as he reveals he wants to learn how Gojo's best technique, uh, techniques actually function. He wants to understand the unique style of Gojo, as this is an underrated aspect of Sukuna's character. If he's curious about how you function, and respects your level of prowess, he will study you and he will also let you know that he respects you as a combatant. As they prepare to head into the next round of battle with both of them damaged, Sukuna says Gojo is ordinary compared to what Sukuna has faced. He also says he is only strongest due to Sukuna not coming from the same era. This is an interesting statement as it is implying that Sukuna has faced sorcerers even better than the likes of Gojo in the past. Both have gone beyond the impossible already, 
incredible considering these same characters discuss impossible mathematics and theories, and they understand the likes of such. However, they said it's impossible what Sukuna and Gojo are demonstrating in this fight, as both are presenting why they have the case of the strongest. Gojo is going all out to end this fight before his invulnerability and infinities are adapted to. He even hits Sukuna off guard with red, then a black flash. Yet Maharaga still appears and adapts. Gojo recalls the last time he faced death, which of course was the goat, Koji, and realizes this really may be the end of him. He must do all he can to destroy them before they adapt and Sukuna takes advantage. Onlookers concede Sukuna is holding back still. The reason is, Sukuna has to face the rest of the world and the heavy hitters immediately after. He also is observing Maharaga, so he understands the adaptation, gets a model that he can use moving forward in case he faces these things he doesn't understand once more. Gojo goes all out, using an unrestricted purple to try and end Sukuna and his summonings. He then believes he has won after using this last ditch attack to try to pull off the W. This is when Gojo goes on to be in a dream state. He explains no matter what he did, he could not get Sukuna to go all out. The fact he could, could not draw out the best of Sukuna pissed him off, but dying to such an insane opponent was fulfilling to him, as for a very long time, Gojo felt alone in his extreme power. Sukuna confirms he had seen the model constructed by Maharaga. While infinity is an incredible technique, Sukuna could bypass it if he destroyed the space and even the existence surrounding it, as again, these infinities are brought up in its own pocket existence. In the end, he even says to him that he respected Gojo for what he had done and for what he had demonstrated. In the end, Sukuna uh, proved to be the superior to Gojo, one who had prep and even power from others. On top of this, he was just simply playing it out to see and learn from what Gojo techniques were and how they operated, just allowing himself to further his IQ of the verse. Thank you guys so much for watching for all those that made it this far in the video. This was me demonstrating the power and abilities and speed of the likes of Sukuna. I will make an in-depth as well on the likes of Madara and then I'll re revisit the battle if my opinion has changed and it will be much more in depth. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been your boy Javas and Goons and I'll see y'all later. Peace.